music. Or you make an EDM music, right? I thought you I thought you thought the next one was the crazy one. I thought that was the one that you were you were freaking out about. Oh, I'm not there yet. I can make the highest score on Snake. So what is that? Is that just when you get like an integer overflow or is there like a <laughs> Or like a defined high score. <laughs> I guess it's when your snake fills up the whole screen. <laughs> on Nokia. On old Nokia. Yeah, yeah let's yeah, go. Yeah, it's like four bit. <laughs> yeah, how, how, yeah, how big can that actually be? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, now we've learned a lot of important stuff about these runners. We've had, they've had one match that has been a little bit of a push. Let's get them into the groove again here. Let's see who's going to score first blood, who's going to take down the first point. This next CAD matchup between Latvia and Romania begins... In three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXX grams? This part is called right arm mount and it's a tier four part. Both of our runners are grabbing a screen capture and I encourage all of you to do the same. This part is in millimeters and it is 1060 aluminum and we are ready to rock. Let's make sure we don't miss any of the action. Mr. Alex on the left running solid works. Ozzy Asai, also known as Adrian, on the right, running Katia. And I think now we're going to get a chance to see that thing with the dimensions in Katia, where he's going to put in all the dimensions and he's going to go through the table. Unless that was only something Muhammad was doing. I guess we'll find out <laughs> in a second. Yeah, man, I love this part. I What's really cool about it is I'm pretty sure you could do the whole thing from, like, two sketches. Yeah. Jern says, this is a great classic ttt model thank you jern yeah yeah we're going back to back to the old school there you go now i often find myself in mr alex's situation here where like i'll draw the outline of a part and then halfway through realize oh maybe i should have made this a circle instead of an arc and then <laughs> i have to like add in another arc and then make it a co-radial um I don't know, just different approaches, different ways to do that. Yeah. Just keep this moving straight on. He's, I'm not doing that stupid layout approach. I'm going to build this feature by feature yeah. so that I can have good uh, reusability and my coworkers can understand what the heck I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. And I noticed that uh, Mr. Alex there just ran into that little hiccup we've all run into with a circle, giving you like a zero diameter dimension, got through it, no problem. And also, I like what you said about going feature by feature. That's like a almost what Victor K said, right? He said, that's kind of how I like to do it with speed modeling. And so our runners are kind of uh, going with his advice a little bit there. Yeah, it's interesting. I probably would have done that that wall feature on the right-hand side in that base sketch and then just done like a contour selection. Um, but it looks like both of our runners here are opting to do the simplest possible base sketch. <laughs> I like it. And build the features on top, which yeah. is objectively the right thing to do. Yeah. Feature, feature, feature. Let's go. Is it objectively the fastest thing to do? I don't know. But yes. We'll see. EUP, that, that to me says, not in FreeCAD, a sketch for everything on its own sketch in FreeCAD. Yeah, there's some. There's going to be some CAD modelers that just can't, they don't have that option to do those kind of contours. So I like the way- I got to check out FreeCAD because yeah. people are ripping on it. <laughs> I like the way Mr. I like the way Mr. Alex is uh, using the the chamfer command here off after creating like essentially a counter bore. That was a pretty clever way to generate that tapered hole there. I really like that. that. Is clever, but you gotta do some math in your head on that. Yes, and it looks like maybe that math was slightly off. Huh? Oh, is he gonna just? Yeah, I, gonna, I won't say more, but he's gonna inch uh, up to it there yeah, a little bit. You gotta be careful. Yeah, I do appreciate though. It shows. I can think of at least three ways to do that counterboard feature. Yeah. Yeah, it shows that there's there's so many different uh, different approaches in 3D CAD. Yeah, it looks like Ozzy's getting started on that wall, which is arguably the hardest feature on this whole thing. It just has some more complex sketching at, at the minimum. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a good idea to move into that because that, you know, Ozzy's probably comfortable making that counterboard. Um, I'm sure Katia's got a great tool that just pops counterboards out of nowhere. Yep. Great use of uh, well, look either convert or offset entities here. Yeah, to get those those uh, thin walls essentially. Yep. Ace says he's got it. Wow. This dude's too fast.
Yeah, okay. So, Mr. Alex, rather than going around selecting individual contours to uh, offset, he's just like, I'm going to click the entire face and offset that and then just hack away what I don't need. Yeah. Which, unless you have a really complicated outside uh, profile is a pretty good way to do it. Yeah, I definitely uh, can get on board with that. In fact, I've got a, uh, I've got some thoughts on that that topic in general, like offsetting and converting edges versus faces. So that's going to be, you'll, you'll probably see some content on that in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, Coming goes back to what I was saying earlier, like if you're pretty confident the underlying geometry isn't going to change, it's safe to use. But I don't like to use convert entities too early in a feature tree because it just makes it way too... It just builds so many dependencies on it that you know are going to break later. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely can end up. I mean, it sounds like you've got a lot of experience in the real world and having customers be like, what if we just move that there? And you're like, oh, okay. And then you move it and everything breaks and you're like, just give me a minute. Yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> Especially when you get into furniture, like try modeling a couch cushion and then <laughs> saying, oh, I want to add buttons to it and like piping. You're yeah. screwed. Like you got to do that stuff at the very end. And even then you're probably, if you need to tweak it, you're probably just redoing it from scratch. I like Mr. Alex picking up on that fillet at the end there. I was worried he was going to miss that. And uh, I think he did a good job of recognizing that and coming Looks through like with we it. Got an answer coming we're, in. Yeah, we're going to see an answer coming in here in a second. And Mr. Mr. Alex comes in with an answer for 67 grams. And that is correct. So well done to Mr. Alex, getting that first point. Very nicely done. Congratulations. That's what's up. Oh, these guys were so fun, so. Yeah, EG was right there. Behind him. Just a few features behind him. Wow, wow, wow. Nice job. And he's still going. Curious if he'll uh, end up with the right answer here. Yeah. Wow. So close, both of them. That was awesome. Well, GG to the winner, GG to Mr. Alex on that one. And, uh, guys, that was a pretty, pretty darn good match. Guys, you like that match?